Okay, so now we have a UbiConf is week 2020 town hall meeting. Um, yep. So here is the agenda. Uh, so I'm gonna give you some updates on the UbiConf side. And Sylvia will join us to give some updates uh, from the Imua side. And then Christoph uh, will give you some updates on the Izubik side. Uh, after those updates, uh, we're gonna do a bit of interactive polling as well as Q&A. Uh, which uh, we spend most of the time of this uh, town hall meeting. Uh, so you can ask any questions about the conference organization or steering committee organization. Uh, so we have general chairs and TPCs and Sevier and the Crystal from the Izubik uh, SC and me as uh, the representative of the steering committee from Yubicomp. So updates uh, from the Yubicomp. So thank you for your hard work, uh, 2020 team. Uh, the Monica, Nadir, Christoph, Flora, Gregory, Thomas, Jennifer, and also uh, all the other chairs who made the very first virtual UbiConf Easy Week uh, happen. Uh, thank you very much. I'm pretty sure that's a lot of effort uh, you needed to make uh, to make this happen. Uh, I knew that they put a lot of effort for the planned physical conference, but unfortunately, uh, the, the, uh, the event of the, the COVID-19, uh, they had to make a very difficult decision to move to a fully virtual conference like we have right now. Uh, but that the team made another enormous effort to make this happen. Uh, so thank you very much. And then please uh, see them uh, in the gather channel uh, after the closing plenary. Uh, say please say thank you to them. And they put a really, really lots of effort, right? So uh, it looks like quite, you know, uh, easy to do that, but it isn't. You know, they have to set up all kinds of tools and they have to collect all kinds of data and the information from the authors and they make, uh, bring, the, uh, bring it together uh, so that you can have a nice uh, virtual conference experience. Uh, I would like to let you know uh, that our future conference plans and locations uh, for the next year, uh, we have decided to go with a fully virtual conference again. I will explain the details later. And for 2022, uh, we are going to Cancun, uh, which was uh, originally set up uh, in 2020, uh, uh, but we decided to move this uh, to 2022. And for 2023, uh, we collected a bit uh, from the Pacific Asia, uh, originally for 2021. And the SC made a decision uh, that uh, we are going to uh, go to Melbourne, Australia. Uh, but uh, due to uh, the move of uh, 2021 and the 2022, uh, we decided to go to uh, Melbourne uh, for 2023. And for 2024, uh, the bid is not open yet. Uh, but I would like to let you know that the preference will be given to Europe. Uh, so if any of you are interested in uh, hosting Ubicomp uh, is a week, please uh, let me know. So the rationale of the holding the fully virtual conference again next year. Uh, so we still have some uncertainty uh, about the international, around the international travels uh, due to COVID-19. I think the situation is getting better uh, in many countries, but still the international travels are still banned. I think we still don't know whether that's actually lifted up or not uh, by uh, the next September. And then um, we definitely want to avoid last minute changes uh, to the fully virtual conference uh, from the physical conference, which uh, uh, caused a lot of work uh, in the organization team. And luckily, uh, we also don't need to pay uh, any penalty fee uh, for the postponement of the physical meeting uh, in terms of those venue. Uh, in Cancun. So that's uh, another good news. Uh, uh, as you may not know, uh, we need uh, quite a bit of time to coordinate with ACM in terms of getting approval of the finance, um, making a contract and kind of stuff. Uh, so we definitely need uh, uh, one year uh, to plan out uh, the how the conference should run in the next year. And then uh, 2020 team uh, created a wonderful asset uh, we can reuse. Uh, such as Zoom and Uber and GatherTown. Uh, so, uh, so we can basically use uh, the same system uh, for the 2021 and so that you know, uh, we can have more uh, expectable experience of the conference for you. And for 2021, uh, so 
we are looking for the GCs, uh, general chairs and technical program chairs uh, who are willing to tackle uh, this challenge with us. Uh, so recommendations and the safe recommendations are very welcome. Uh, so if you have any person in your mind, uh, if you are really interested in doing things, uh, please send an email to me uh, or just directly talk to me at the, the gather town meeting uh, after the closing plenary. And if you get approached by me, uh, please say yes. <laughs> it's important to set up the team as soon as possible uh, so that you can work uh, the, uh, the, the next uh, year's conference as soon as possible. And I'm also happy to help uh, to the like, GCs and TPCs. Uh, so please uh, raise your hands uh, if you would like to uh, join us. And 2022 in Cancun, uh, this is another lucky part uh, for our community is that the 2022 uh, GC has already put uh, uh, enormous effort uh, to explore the new presentation formats. And uh, unfortunately, this didn't happen uh, due to uh, the transition to the virtual, fully virtual conference. Uh, but we, we definitely would like to make them happen in Cancun. Uh, so that's, that's something we would like to see. And then some of the 2020 teams uh, kindly uh, show their willingness to continue uh, serving as GCs. Uh, for a physical gathering in Cancun. But uh, we also would like to give some break uh, for them. So that's why I would like to recruit new uh, general chairs and technical program chairs for the next year. So in terms of the new presentation format, uh, that was uh, presented in the last year town hall meeting. Uh, so I would like to give a brief summary of that. Uh, so that last year, uh, Ubicom this week, uh, SC brought a discussion issue about the new presentation format uh, for the paper trucks uh, address an increase in the number of the papers to be presented. And then 2020 TPCs uh, were in charge of exploring the new options with the help of GCs. And for maintaining the transparency of the decisions, a uh, steering committee decided to form a team uh, that included a few representatives uh, from SC as well as the UBCOMP ESWIC community. As a result, uh, we had uh, this team. Uh, the James Scott uh, was chairing this team and the uh, of Sunny, uh, Mark, uh, Christine, Rajesh, Robert, uh, Zana, uh, the team members, and also me uh, as observer. And I really appreciate their effort uh, to discuss uh, the new presentation format uh, with uh, the 2020 team. Uh, the very quick summary of the progress. So TPC created the initial uh, format plan, and the discussion team, uh, as I presented uh, in the last slide, uh, reviewed and provided feedback. So that was done at the end of uh, the February 2020. 20, 2020. Uh, however, uh, as you know, uh, due to the outbreak of the COVID-19, uh, we decided to move to a fully virtual conference. So as a result, uh, 2020 team uh, needed to employ a uh, different paper presentation format, although it reflects some aspects of the ideas we discussed, uh, such as a shorter presentation time and a longer panel discussion at the end of the session. So I heard uh, kind of many voice uh, saying that uh, the, uh, the people enjoy the panel discussions. Uh, we would like to hear more uh, about your experience uh, of the, those paper trucks and as well as other trucks, and also the, uh, the experience in other tools uh, such as Uber, um, uh, Gallatin. So uh, please grab that's the, the current GCs and TPCs or SC members uh, to uh, let us hear your voice. And for the future conferences uh, for the next year, uh, we probably won't make any major changes in terms of the paper presentations, uh, mainly because of the limited time, uh, or limited amount of the time, but uh, we may want to do some like a small experiments uh, so that we can have some like a lessons learned uh, from the upcoming years. Uh, for 2022, uh, we will keep exploring the new presentation formats and then hopefully you will see them in Cancun next year. Uh, so that you have a kind of better interactive experiences uh, about uh, the kind of research uh, uh, presentation. And we are definitely looking forward to your feedback. So please feel free to share them uh, with TPCs uh, or any of the C members uh, like me. Um, please let us hear your voice. So we have set up uh, the Mentimeter uh, and the, uh, you, I'm, uh, we are asking the two questions. So please tell us the best things of the UBCOMP is week 2020 and how can uh, the next virtual uh, UBCOMP is week be better. Uh, so please scan this QR code 
and you're going to ask to type some keywords uh, or some sentences. Uh, so that's really useful information for us. And then we also distributed the conference survey. Uh, so please uh, have your time uh, to respond to uh, those survey as well. It's really important to hear your experience because this is very first time uh, for us to run uh, the conference virtually. Uh, so we're gonna share some results uh, of this uh, Ventimeter at the end of this meeting. Uh, and so you can you know, keep listening to uh, the, 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 some presentations by us uh, while uh, answering uh, these uh, two questions. Okay, so let's move on to Imut. Sylvia? Okay, I'm here. So thank you, Koji, for your, for your summary and for your um, observations. So I'm gonna give um, a short uh, update on Imut. Um, so I guess, uh, so for the slides, uh, Koji, are you? Yeah, so uh, just a brief recap on statistics. Um, I uh, gave some uh, information about statistics in the opening, so I'm not gonna um, uh, repeat all of that, but just, um, I mean, some core numbers that I think may be interesting to, um, to look at uh, in terms of uh, submissions we um, got from the beginning of the journal and accepted papers, and thus the um, acceptance rate that we have uh, until now, which is 24%. I think from the plot uh, that I put on this slide, you can see that there is a, kind of a trend uh, on the acceptance rate that goes a little bit down, so we are observing that and, uh, uh, you know, uh, trying to analyze that a little bit more detail. Uh, and then uh, we are uh, going to see the next year which, uh, which number we're going to present then for the, um, for the acceptance rate. Um, I think it's also interesting on the next slide uh, to see. So on the, the Inwood web page, you can, you can find this word cloud with the subject areas of all the papers published until now. And I think it's nice to look a little bit at these uh, uh, to uh, get a feeling of what's the, the, the scope of the journal, right? The, the actual scope of the journal in terms of uh, what are the topics of the papers published. Um, we, uh, uh, very much hope that uh, uh, topics, I mean, you, you already see also, I mean, a, a very interesting and um, actually wide also range of topics. You see also wearable topics. And I hope that uh, from this year on, we're going to get, um, you know, even more contributions in that area. So in the, on the next slide, um, I want to uh, you know, mention again that uh, we had this big change in 2020, so that ESPIC decided to join the journal first publication model of Input, uh, which basically means that both Ubicomp and ESPIC now draw their, uh, the content of their main technical tracks from, from Input. Um, I think the ESPIC chairs are going to briefly mention these also later, so um, I'm not going to... Um, uh, give more details on, on this. Um, there is also, there have been a lot of changes on the input um, editorial boards. I mean, both in terms of associate editors, but also in terms of, of editors. So um, on the next slide, I'd like to uh, use the next slide to thanks, uh, thank actually our editors, I mean, editor-in-chief and editors emeriti. I mean, first of all, Gregory, who um, passed over the role of editor-in-chief to me in last November and the uh, uh, editors, Vasilis Kostagos, Julie Key, and Koji Yatani, that uh, also in the course of 2019 um, uh, le left the team. Uh, I mean, this, they, I think, deserve an applause for their service to the, uh, to the community. Um, and I uh, would like also to uh, say a big welcome to the new editors that uh, replaced the upcoming editors. Uh, so Tanzim, Tao, Thomas, and Jivan that are actually already working for the journal since, uh, since several months. Um, as last uh, point, I wanted to discuss with you, and I think uh, this could be also something uh, we could, uh, um, you know, that could raise some questions then uh, later, is the COVID-19 response of input uh, on the uh, next slide. Um, could you... Sorry, go to the next slide. So um, I think uh, I want to start with a positive uh, note, which is that the review process actually suffered only minor delays. We had, um, I think, um, as you can imagine, some, some troubles, especially in the February cycle, because basically the emergency, at least in Europe and US, um, struck us when we were um, actually collecting reviews or in the last phase of reviewer assignments in the February cycle. And that, of course, affected many, many people. But that was actually, <clears throat> very, very positively surprised by the reaction of our associate editors because uh, notwithstanding the difficult situation, uh, many um, 
many editors and so these editors were leaving we basically really had only minor delays and and no major delays on the on the issues then of the journal i think this is a um a very a very good result we um decided in that situation to grant um submissions in the november 2019 cycle that had their so submissions that got major revision decisions in that cycle had the possibility to resubmit either in february or may given the situation we decided to give them the chance to resubmit also in august so we prolonged so to say uh, the time um, available to work on major revisions and um, i think five or six um, papers uh, took also um, advantage of this uh, possibility we have also discussed a lot in the teams of editors the possibility to, I mean, we have been asked also about deadline extensions. Uh, we decided not to extend the deadlines in the sense not move the deadline in May 15 to May 20 or, 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 or later. This um, <clears throat> has um, several reasons. I would say the major one is that Inboot actually already offers for deadline a year. <clears throat> you see my voice is, uh, is going away. Um, and we have very, very fast review cycles. So we basically have no slack between cycles. So we, when we finish one cycle, we are already preparing the next one. And this is also important for the issues that are then published. So if we move the deadlines, then it's not possible for us to make it on time for the issue, um, right? I mean, uh, after that. And so it is very, very um, critical for us, even, even one, two weeks. And, uh, and so extending the deadlines, we understand that that's a benefit for the authors, at least, or at least on the short term, but that puts a burden on, uh, on the journal, both in terms of, of, um, of uh, timing of the review cycles and the issues and of, uh, of internal organization. And um, yeah, so I think uh, that's it. I mean, we are of course open to discussion and um, suggestions on all these points. Thank you very much. <clears throat> okay, thank you very much. Sylvia, and now we move on to easily updates. Christoph. Thank you, Koji. Um, I mean, as you, you said, yourself said already, and Sylvia also mentioned, um, there has been one big change for us, which is that uh, the long papers that uh, traditionally were um, part of the ISWIC uh, um, um, proceedings or uh, outputs, so to say, have now been redirected or have been now directed to inputs, um, and, you know, representing the W in Imut, basically. And I think this is a process that already started long ago because slowly um, the two communities have merged ever since ISWIC and UBICOM have been co-located. And we already had a big overlap between the ISWIC PC members and the Imut, uh, the Imut uh, um, associate editors. So I think this is something that slowly, gradually uh, moved. And um, this year, well, actually yeah, last year became uh, a reality. So the last two issues have been already there, um, uh, been filling with uh, the long um, wearable papers that we know. Another change, however, is also that our long-term leader, Tat Starner, um, has stepped down as the, um, the chair for the steering committee. Um, and this is a very big responsibility because he's been doing this for more than two decades. Um, and these are very big shoes to fill. So therefore, there's two of us now who are going to, who's going to try to replace that, um, Kai Kunz and myself. Um, that, of course, will be still involved in the board. Um, but uh, the change in leadership is something that we are now, you know, slowly getting used to. And then the final thing I wanted to say from this week's side is that um, Next year, um, or well, the, the next edition uh, will be this week's 25th anniversary. So we're already started to plan bigger things to celebrate this. And before my voice also completely dies, I think this is it uh, for my side. Yeah, thank you very much. And uh, now we are moving to the interactive pooling and Q&A. So I totally misunderstand how the Meti Mentor works. And I uh, will hand over to uh, Flora, uh, who uh, kindly set up the, this Meti Mentor for us. Hello. Um, so let me just uh, share, share my screen. So if you um, if you're not on yet, 
would you please uh, go to menti.com and use the code 6201829. We have 18 people responding. Um, let's take more responses. Tell us the best things of VBCom this week 2020. Yeah, so the link is available in the chat uh, in this too. Yeah, there's a link, or you can also straight go straight to menti.com and use the code 6201829. I can already see some key topics emerging. One of the big words here is get a town. So obviously people love get a town. Um, six minutes talk. So apparently this was like one of the, you know, uh, the most radical change we did, I think, uh, up to uh, you become in London last year, the talks were about 12 minutes. And then we said, what about if we cut it by half to six? And apparently people love them. I mean, in the, in the beginning, it was, uh, there was a huge resistance to do it. Uh, I mean, how could you feed a, a presentation of a journal paper into six minutes? Uh, it sounds impossible, but it actually works. So I'm really glad that people actually found that uh, as one of the highlights. Uh, coffee, wow, <laughs> how, how would you actually share that? Um, uh, moderated Q and A's, low cost, uh, Wolva. So some people love Wolva. Um, we've got 70 responses. Please um, keep them coming. All right. What else do you see? What What else do you see here, Koji? That are highlight. For you. Um, let's see, short talks, low cost, get out town. I mean, uh, so somewhere in a no travel. <laughs> no travel. Uh, if the, <laughs> any of the GC or uh, if Gregory is also um, on right now, feel free to comment on what you see here. I saw someone had mentioned more cowbell, less Gregory. I'm all for that. <laughs> The cowbells are on me, I guess. <laughs> Too much Gregory content. Yes. All right. Uh, there's Christoph too over there. Nadia Weibel. N Nadia, you're a hit. So oh, we... discussion. I see. Discussion was a hit. Okay. Um, what else? Pre-recorded presentation. Um, and there's the word sleep there. So uh, I actually had a chat with someone who, uh, who feels he's having a, a jet lag because um, he's from Asia Pacific, same as me on this side. So, and I do feel jet lag too, although we don't have to travel because we actually have to, um, we, we have roughly uh, the minimum amount, amount of hours of sleep between the two main paper sessions, unlike uh, you know, a uh, lot of you folks uh, in the U.S. side. So, um, so yeah, we do feel jet like too, <laughs> although it's actually local. What else? Um, so I think six minute talks and short talks, you know, can be clustered together. That, that becomes a big one. AMA coming up. AMA is Ask Me Anything is one of the activity we had in Gather Town. That's good. Okay, uh, I'm still getting responses. Tell me when you think we are ready to move to the next question. Yeah, maybe should we move on to the next question? Let's move to the next question. Yep. So thank you for all the feedback. If you wanna write more, there's space to do so in a survey, right? In the survey, we accept uh, mm -hmm. long text responses. Yes. Next. Now, how can the next virtual you become this week can be better? How can we get this improved from what experience? So the, there have been a lot of positives, but how do we even make it even better? 
<laughs> no gator town. This is a complete opposite, right? Well, yeah, for people. Same. Yeah, obviously we can uh, we can please everybody. Stable gator town. Okay, that's a little bit more specific. Longer talks. Better audio. Okay, so we have a competing longer presentation now. Longer talks. No hula. No Kai deadline, there you go. How about that? More Gregory. <laughs> I thought people want the less Gregory. <laughs> it's a contradiction. So I, think they want to I think they want to throw Gregory into Gather Town with a Hoover. Yeah, you should hang around. Uh, you know, now that no more, there's no more Kai deadline. It would be nice if everyone could actually just hang out in Gather Town after this. Yeah, so you're all invited. After this, there is a closing, and after the closing, obviously, you're all invited back into Gather Town to talk and chat and give you more feedback. So we, we would love that. Yeah, yeah. So absolutely, I think some of us didn't have like, an opportunity to uh, kind of explore around uh, the uh, Gather Town due to the card deadline, but it's already over. Yay! So just please uh, join at the Gather Town, and then you know. And if we uh, are all in find... agreement, I, I would say let's meet at the beach. Oh yeah, that's good. <laughs> I think Nadia has uh, the guide uh, for us, so let's follow him. Later. Yes, I'll show you at the end of the of the closing how to get to the beach. All right. Um, so we can keep that going, but uh, I, I like to hand this back over to you. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Nadia, so, let me just stop. So that's pretty much you. the content we uh, prepared uh, for this town hall meeting. And the rest of the time uh, we'd like to spend um, with you uh, by letting you ask questions directly to me or other ZCs, TPCs, or email editor in chief. Uh, so please write down your Q&A in where are they supposed to write? In Uber or Zoom? Whatever you like, I guess. Anywhere, yeah. Right off the bat, there's a question about the inward impact factor. Uh, Sylvia, you want to talk about that? Oh. The question is uh, specified how? Whether how, are, how are things going with the inward impact factor? So we, sh so I know that there is an application going, so that we should get um, an official impact factor. Um, I don't have information on when uh, we can expect this to be to be official. So this is ongoing, ACM is taking care of this uh, and I, I hope to get new information soon. Um, so the application I think has been submitted already um, before the summer or the beginning of the summer. So these things may take some months, uh, but so we, we do not have an answer yet. Okay, uh, so there's another question about the card deadline. Uh, so this already came up in the pooling. Uh, as a follow up, any idea about the dates of the conference in the future? Uh, so this already discussed uh, in a town hall meeting last year, and then we kind of decided to move to kind of early October uh, for at least the upcoming uh, few uh, years. Although uh, the 2022 already uh, set up the before uh, the 2019, so that's why uh, we were not able to move around. Uh, but for next year, uh, I'm not sure that's whether it's possible or not to move the dates, but uh, if possible, we are thinking of moving uh, that dates a little bit uh, so that we can avoid uh, the collision uh, with the Kai deadline. I think for 2022, Monica can uh, probably confirm we should also be able to move it to early October, right? Yeah, uh, maybe we need to talk to ACM. We might, be a we might need uh, some update on the PAF. So that's kind of the admin stuff we have to do. Um, but I think uh, I'll definitely talk to ACM. 
Any other questions? There is again a kind of question about the CHI deadline. It came up also on uh, on Hoover. So we just answered. The answer is uh, yes. We're working on it. I think it's already confirmed for uh, <clears throat> uh, 2023. We're probably going to be able to do it in 2022 and probably also for next year. The Modulo uh, ACM agreement. On Hoova, somebody is asking if it's possible to have slightly longer panel discussion after each session. Those are very informative. Yeah, I think that's that's a great idea. Uh, so I actually chatted with the Flora right after the first uh, session end, and then I kind of missed that the some sort of like a kind of informal kind of interactions are uh, typically we have after the session, right? So that's the authors are still around the podium. And then some of the those attendees just came to the pod, uh, kind of next uh, near the podium, and then they kind of interact with the authors directly, right? Uh, so you know, I, I kind of missed that kind of atmosphere, and then Flora kind of nicely addressed that issue uh, by providing uh, additional space, right? Uh, in I think the yellow town, right? Uh, so maybe you know, uh, we might want to have uh, maybe you know we can have uh, a longer uh, panel discussion is one idea. Uh, but uh, we can also maybe explore other possibilities, such as having more sort of, you know, encouraging some sort of uh, informal conversations right after the sessions. Uh, so I'd like to talk just, just a little bit about that, Koji, just to let people yeah. know what we were planning to do if we had the uh, regular okay. physical conference. Yeah. So one of the ideas um, was that we would have what we were calling a multimodal session. And the idea there was it would be very similar to the uh, sessions we had this year, where there would be these back-to-back -back presentations and then some collective discussion, but immediately at the end of the session, uh, the authors would go to poster stations. We wanted them to be basically in the back of the room where the session was, so the conversations could continue with those particular uh, um, authors. And that bleeding into social activities like lunch. Uh, um, and I think the venue in Cancun actually is very amenable to that kind of um, activity. So. Uh, I agree that the discussion is the most valuable part. Uh, um, it's not clear that everyone wants to sit in a session and listen to discussion that they may not be participating in. But if we could do something where uh, uh, you could have a dedicated time to talk to authors, even a collection of people, even a facilitated discussion with those authors, um, it would have been great in uh, this virtual conference if you could have just clicked a button and gone straight to that poster presentation after, after session uh, discussion because it was a little hard, I realized, for people to get to the place in Gather Town uh, um, to have those kinds of discussions. Uh, but I'd, I'd like to hear other people's uh, ideas about what we might do for both virtual and physical in the future. Oh, thanks, Barry. Um, move on to the next questions. Can we encourage more senior faculty and researchers in the industry coming to Gather Town? It be great help student network. I totally agree with that. Um, I'm pretty sure some of us kind of uh, stayed uh, in the Gather Town for a while. Uh, I wasn't able to make it for the kind of late night time uh, in Japan time, uh, but I was uh, trying to be as much as uh, I can uh, in the kind of after uh, the morning time in Japan. Uh, so yeah, but it's maybe a little bit difficult to kind of find a specific person uh, or you know, kind of directly talk to them. Uh, so maybe like, uh, so I think that the GC has already set up uh, the the session something called like that's the AMA. I think that's a wonderful idea. Uh, maybe we want to explore a bit more uh, kind of similar uh, things uh, in the next year. We can talk a little bit about that. So the AMA I think worked relatively well. We heard a lot of people that liked that. We didn't hear anybody who disliked it, which is good. It was <clears throat> only one day, so it would be very feasible in the future to expand it to multiple days. We need to find people, senior people, who are interested, and the commitment is not very big, and I think it's fun. Uh, so I think it's very doable. I think on the industry side, uh, uh, and maybe Monica can talk a little bit about it, so we try to do that with industry as well, 
industry didn't see really the benefit to do that, although we tried very hard. They were like, oh, we don't know if a virtual event would bring us something. We were convinced it would. I think for next year we could try harder and show, you know, the success of what happened this year. And I'm, I don't know, I'm not sure, but I'm pretty confident and in some industry folks will see, uh, you know, the benefits of doing it. Okay, next question is about Imot. Most journals accept a conference paper extension. Does IMIWA accept this, uh, which might be tricky due to the anonymization policy? Sylvia? Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, an extension of a conference paper is, uh, of course, something you can submit to Invoot as long as the, you know, the, the new contribution is, uh, is significant enough to, to grant a new publication. And also, as we always uh, phrase it, uh, the, the length of the paper must be commensurate to the contribution. So we do not expect uh, the paper then to repeat what has been published already, but only to present the new content. The anonymization policy should not be a major issue because uh, the, the anonymization policy we have in input is, a, is a, I would say, a weak one. So we actually require you only to anonymize the, the, basically the, the front page of the paper and the, and the header, uh, but we do not prohibit to refer to previous work. So that's a choice of the authors, whether they want to um, explicitly refer to their previous work, for example, a conference paper, or if they want to do that anonymously, so by referring to that work in, in third person. And um, so I don't believe that's a problem, that's more choice of the authors than how they want to present their contribution. I hope this. Yep. And the next one is also kind of in what things. Uh, can we consider reviewing workshop for in what? Uh, to help new researchers uh, in the community and also to standardize expectations. Oh, so organizing workshop for um, for yeah, uh, reviewing for... guidelines and so on. That's that's exactly. a very good question. Um, I think I've seen somewhere even that there is an effort in this direction more at the at the SIG level. Uh, but definitely yes. I mean, uh, that's a very good point. Um, where we could do more I mean, coaching and also try to calibrate, of course, then the, the reviewing standards. So in general, I would take this as a suggestion that we try to um, coach our um, reviewers, especially the most junior ones, uh, one uh, a little bit more. Um, we have to, to figure out the logistics for this. Um, um, we can start maybe with more information about um, reviewing principles and reviewing guidelines. Sylvia, could I just suggest maybe we do a half-day workshop at UBCOMP next year? That's a good point, yeah. I mean, if we can do it virtually, it's also, in a, in a sense, easier, of course, to uh, at least to, to organize it. We could do multiple slots, um, even so that fits mm -hmm. maybe people in. Uh, so that's definitely a um, suggestion, yes. Depending on how it goes, uh, it could be a regular workshop. Yeah. That's true, yeah. Yeah, so another thing related that we may want to consider is some sort of like a paper writing workshop. I think the many of the authors now are uh, from different uh, countries and then some of the authors are not uh, non-native speakers and then they definitely would like to have some guidance uh, to uh, how to write, uh, you know, uh, attractive uh, in what submission, right? So that's, you know, there are some kind of nuggets you should know and that you can easily do uh, to make your paper, you know, looks polished, right? Uh, so that's, I think, of course, you know, as well as how you frame your work and kind of stuff. Uh, so, you know, if you can do some sort of like a venturing things, I think that's also pretty encouraging as a community. Someone's saying Good there's idea. a hand raised. I, really? I can't see a hand. I, I can't see a hand raised, but I got my stuff. <laughs> yes, there are so many communication channels to us. Which is... Oh, Flora yeah, said was... there's a hand raised. Oh. Is, it, is it no longer <laughs> right. raised, Flora? Yeah, I think that the hand's no longer raised. <laughs> okay. So, By yeah. all means, if you want to say something, you're sitting out there in Zoom or Hoboland, raise your hand. Yeah, that's another way to do it. Yes, we can unmute you and you can, um, you know, share your experience or maybe ask your questions directly. Okay, one question in Zoom. Uh, really enjoyed the panel today on the multidisciplinary perspective. Can we have some more of this? Uh, what we what might we do to encourage people from other community to be in the Ubicon? I just yeah, want I to say, that's... this is a real advantage of the virtual format. Uh, um, it's not that difficult to get people to agree to spend an hour of their time um, and yeah. don't even necessarily need that much notice. So 
th this is really a wonderful feature of, of being virtual. Yeah, that's so true. Maybe we want to expand a bit more to invite more uh, people outside the community uh, so that we can get uh, some like a nice stimulation besides the uh, papers and demos and posters. Yeah, I always enjoy that as a keynote. Um, it's really, you know, something that I don't really know, right? So that's that's really a new perspective, um, new knowledge. And that's that's something uh, I always uh, looking forward to see. Any other question? Okay. Um, so someone who is in uh, the Uber. Oh, that's the same thing, I guess. Yeah. Uh, I also would like to uh, give your feedback on if you have attended any other virtual conferences, uh, you know, I wonder uh, what uh, some good things uh, they saw in the other conferences and they, we might want to use or we might want to uh, transfer from. Uh, so that's maybe another things uh, maybe we would also like to know. And if there is something like that, please uh, let us know as well uh, through Q&A right now, or maybe directly uh, talk to us uh, in the gather town later. There is a Just comment. Uh, there is a comment to one of the question about the panel. Uh, it's. Uh, I think we can take it as a question. It's, it would be good to repeat sessions in multiple time zones. So we discussed this, and this was an option. Um, so we uh, we wanted to do that at some point. Uh, so that's one of the possibilities to do it. Uh, it's obviously more work uh, for, uh, uh, for especially for panelists. So if you have pre-recorded talks, uh, it's easy enough to, to play them. But then the question was, what do we do with panels? If you want to do engaging panels, uh, are we repeating the panel multiple times? Are authors going to show up? Or are we only going to have panels with uh, part of the authors that are OK with that uh, time zone? So yes, it is possible. But obviously, there are shortcomings for that as well. And I know that, Gregory, uh, you were also involved in some of this discussion. I don't know if you have any more thoughts on it. Well, yeah, I mean. We had lots of discussions about how you can take advantage of the virtual format. So uh, some of the things we talked about is replaying whole sessions uh, um, uh, and then having another live discussion. But as Nadir is talking about, that is an additional um, burden on people. We also thought about uh, people being assigned to papers being assigned to multiple sessions so that you could see a different mix of papers together. I'm not so sure that that's that good an idea. I, I definitely see that um, a session is best when it's got an intellectual coherence to it. The discussion flows more naturally. And so uh, I thank AJ Brush and the uh, organizers for having taken one of our sessions and breaking it into its two natural themes and doing those separately as opposed to showing all those papers all at once. There's another question in Huva. So when do we move to in-person conferences? Can we keep recording each talk? Just really nice to have these recordings. Totally agree. Yep. Yeah, plus one. But you know, um, when we try to record these conferences, the live conferences, it's, they, they charge an arm and a leg to do that. Uh, um, just like uh, renting a, a, a projector at these conferences. I think we need some pressure here to, to show that it's not that expensive to do the recording of these, uh, of these talks. So we need to figure out a way to do it ourselves uh, kind of naturally. And, uh, or uh, people pre-record talks and we just, at the, at the real conference, we show the recording and the authors are there for the real discussion. One of the advantages of pre-recorded talks is that session chairs don't have to worry about cutting people off. That's true. Yeah. I think, I mean, I think also the quality of the talks is maybe on average better, at least, I mean, from what I, I saw, I actually enjoyed most of the talks. They were well organized and, uh, of course, all on time. So I think there are many advantages on the pre-recorded talks. 
One interesting thing that I noticed is that some, at the beginning we were expecting some pushback uh, for the pre-recorded talks because that's not something we announced, but we needed to go for that for the virtual conferences. We didn't hear basically any of the authors saying, no, I don't want to do it. So it seems like uh, besides what Sylvia said, which I agree, the quality was good, was higher sometimes at real life and uh, in-person talks, uh, authors you know, were okay to do it as well, which is a good thing. What we're seeing is a really actually polished talks because a lot of these authors have re-recorded them multiple times before it's actually submitted, mm -hmm. which actually becomes a benefit to uh, the audience. And it's actually benefit to the authors too, because now it becomes a permanent thing um, yeah. that everyone can see and watch. And it's actually cr uh, creating a, a lot more exposure to the work rather than the physical conference when you not normally have uh, yeah, uh, uh, you don't have as much as exposure as you, you actually get. Um, uh, and I don't know if Nadia will uh, explain that maybe later in the closing, but we do have all high numbers uh, attending each of these sessions. Yeah, yeah. And, and yeah also so that's something maybe you want to highlight, Nadia. Yeah, we can, we will talk about that in the, in the closing, but we have... Okay, uh, that's great. Yeah. We have, uh, you know, some record attendance of talks uh, of session talks of over 500 that, you know, it could not. It could not happen, you know, in a in a regular conference multi-track. Um, so stay with the close for the closing, so that you can actually see those numbers. So yeah. there is a, a question from Varun, who is actually one of our SP. Interesting. I see you here and I see you there. It's possible to have talks directly on Gather Town instead of Zoom. It would have been more natural transition to discussion after the talks. That's a very good point. We thought about it. Um, um, Gather Town is so experimental. We didn't even know if it would work for what we did. So we thought it would be too much of a risk to do it. But it is totally something that I think, given what we have seen uh, in terms of at least a, uh, from a technical perspective, uh, Gather Town was very stable, um, not for everybody, but I think uh, you know it, it might improve for the future. I think it's feasible. For this year, we just didn't want to risk it because we had no idea if it would actually work. And you can imagine not having even the talks at some point because the infrastructure doesn't allow it, uh, would be quite of a disaster. But it's a good idea. Yeah, I, I had proposed that we actually do this town hall in Gather Town to maybe experience that, but that was uh, uh, probably wisely so was turned down. Uh, um, once they figure out how to uh, reduce the number of times they recalculate who you're near, that's when the real uh, uh, bottlenecks happened. If you move around a lot and you're constantly recalculating who you're near, uh, the thing just breaks. Uh, but I think that's a fixable problem. And, and I agree. I think it would be really interesting to try doing something in that kind of environment. Mm -hmm. And in fact, it's been done. There is a smaller conference, around 100 attendees uh, this summer that did exactly that. And they were really happy. You know, given our size, we're like, okay, if it works with 100, it doesn't mean it works with 1,000. So again, there was a risk we didn't want to take. Yeah, yeah. I also expect to get that town and I really enjoyed it. I definitely would like to use it for my uh, teaching. So that's something that, that I experienced. I personally would like to run uh, this fall. Uh, but you know, we should also be aware of uh, some uh, connection issues. Uh, the Alex uh, brought up the issues of the like, Gather Town has uh, some VPN issues as well, uh, particularly connection from China. Uh, so whereas a Zoom uh, doesn't necessarily, you know, with a Zoom, people don't necessarily need to have the VPN to get connected, although that's the connection might be a little bit unstable. Yeah, so that's something, that's another thing we have to think about. Another important thing about Gather Town that I would like the community to think about is accessibility. Um, so um, it's not quite accessible as you would like. And uh, unfortunately, there is no real virtual conferencing tool like that that is accessible right now. So we hope that they will improve, but that's one important thing as well, I think, for our community to have an accessible conference tool. Okay, any other question? Maybe otherwise we can have a bit of show break before the closing. Oh, we have the closing in this Zoom or moving to something else? Closing will be on Zoom. Uh, so if you are ending, uh, you know, yes, you come back in seven minutes and uh, we're gonna have uh, um, our closing on Zoom. 
Um, the link mm -hmm. is as usual on Hoover and uh, on the website. Um, and after the closing, please, as I said, even if you don't come to the closing, which you should, really should, uh, come to Gather Town. Yeah, great. So thank you very much uh, for joining us on the town hall meeting. Uh, we are looking forward to you seeing you in the next year and the virtually. Uh, and then, yeah, so uh, that's the closing uh, plenary is happening in five, six minutes. Please go there. Uh, unfortunately, I cannot go there because I have to bring my daughter to my kindergarten. Uh, so that's maybe another benefit, you know, I have to do, I can do something like child care. Meanwhile, at the town hall meeting. You will be recorded. <laughs> Thank you very much and enjoy the rest of the day. And please also join the gather town uh, after the closing panel. I will do that. And then meet people and say any uh, things about you felt uh, in the conference and the, how you would like to run the next year. Uh, if you're interested in doing the GCs and TPCs, please let me know. And, you know, we're happy to discuss. Thank you very much. Uh, before we go, just one thing I'd like to say, Koji. Okay. Uh, yeah. um, I think uh, everyone out there watching, uh, we owe a huge debt of gratitude to Nadir, uh, to Christoph, uh, uh, to uh, uh, Monica, uh, to Alex and Francelli, who were the virtual online chairs, and to the vast amount of student volunteers who made this all work. Uh, you guys, uh, we're very indebted to you. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah, please meet them and they say thank you in the gather town. <laughs>